people. That's the impetus of this channel. That's why I do the things that I do, because I want to help you be against this type of thing. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Come to Thoughts. My name is Richard, and we're talking about being a little God and divine spark and liberation. Why not? Coming up next. All right. Freshly roasted coffee. Always good. Briefly about me. I've got a, a handful of, uh, I always like to reiterate. I'm a husband and a father. I'm a pastor of a small church here in Kentucky. And uh, went to seminary, graduated a few years ago. And I'm saying to use this platform against itself. Big tech is big tech. We all know what that means. And yet they allow this type of thing on their channel or their platform. We'll see. Maybe Elon Musk will buy YouTube too. That'd be nice. But anyway, uh, that's a bit about me. Uh, I do have other random things. I like gardening and mountain biking and other such things. Although I don't do that that often. But I also enjoy cooking very much. And I roast my own coffee beans. It's quite good. It really makes a difference. It really does compared to even some of the nice coffee you buy in the store. So we're talking about Jen Hatmaker. Now, Richard, why would you talk about Jen Hatmaker? She's pretty She's pretty Looney Tunes. Yeah, she is. And she's not really professing uh, Christian as far as I know anymore. I've looked at her website before. We won't do it for time. But she doesn't profess Christ any longer. <clears throat> the trouble is she has a following. And she still is tricking people. And all this trickery is, it's just, it's just false teaching. And a lot of it has to do with liberation. So we're going to look briefly at those three things. We're going to watch a clip. She's talking to some lady. And again, everybody has an eschatology. Right. Everybody has a view of the end times. Everybody thinks this should happen. That should happen. I've had liberals, political liberals in particular, tell me that if people would just obey, then everything would be fine. If people would just follow the rules, you know, we could we could usher in this and that. I mean, I've had them say utopia without saying the word utopia. So, again, mark my words. Everybody has an eschatology, even your God hating neighbor or cousin or whatever. They all believe something. Now, at present, most people believe that the world's going to end like we saw from some of the movies, you know, Global Flood. Uh, again, and not God's judgment, although it still would be God's judgment. But he's not going to do that because he already promised he wouldn't. And we can look at that in uh, Genesis 9. But the point is, everybody has an eschatology. So let's look at this here. Old, old Jen. Jenny. Jennifer. <laughs> And let's just let's just see. Obviously, I don't need everyone to go on a 400 mile walking pilgrimage to the Black Madonnas, but I need people to go on a journey for themselves yeah. to find their own sacredness so that we can all start to actually treat each other as if we're sacred. That's beautiful. Yeah. Right. The tendrils of that effect would change our at what everything. It would change everything. Oh yeah. Yeah. And if we had a world where like all women and all black people were truly sacred. That was this isn't the, I'm not going to talk much about it. I already talked about it on Friday, Saturday. But does this include babies? Like black babies? Because two thirds of abortions are black women. I, I have a hunch it doesn't. Just a hunch. It would dismantle literally every system that harms every. us. That's right. <laughs> that, would, that would mean the whole earth would flourish. Oh, yes. Yeah. So um, it always feels so self-defeating that patriarchy and racism and all, all the isms are so stubborn. Also, that includes feminism, maybe, probably. Feminism, communism, socialism, Marxism, Darwinism. 
No, nah, probably not those either. And one, because it's, it would truly be the liberation of Earth if everybody was valued as divine. Oh. It would, it would, it'd be the liberation of the whole Earth, even okay. the men, even the white men. Yeah. Like mm -hmm. it would be for their flourishing too. And mm -hmm. so. It would be for their flourishing too. Oh, well, in that case, I mean, yeah. I mean, I was pushing it all down, voting against it with my dollar, with my vote, everything, absolutely, fighting against it tooth and nail. But if it's going to be for me too, yeah, I mean, I'll do it. It's self-serving, absolutely. I just... Okay. Number one, liberation. Liberation. Well... Here's the thing. We could do that. Liberation of the whole earth. So first of all, this is just a pie in the sky idea, right? And it's like, well, why haven't we done this before? Oh, yeah. Actually, I think a lot of the tyrants of the 20th century have tried. We know their names. The big old, uh, you know, big Adolf and Vladimir Lenin and Stalin and this and that and all these other guys. Yeah, but hey, those are different, right? They killed people because they wouldn't cooperate. Everyone should just cooperate now. I mean, like 7 billion people, you know, all the same religion, all the same faith, all the same everything, all the same worldview. Sorry, my allergies are a little harassing me. But we already have that in the word, don't we? Romans 8, 4, I consider the sufferings of this present time that are not worthy, not worth comparing to the glory that is to be revealed to us. For the creation waits with eager longing. For the revealing of the sons of God. For the creation was subjected to futility, not willingly, but because of him who subjected it in hope. That the creation itself will be set free from its bondage to corruption and in pain and a freedom of the glory of the children of God. For we know that the whole creation has been groaning in the pangs of childbirth until now, and not only the creation, but we ourselves who have the first fruits of the Spirit groaning inwardly as we wait eagerly for the adoption as sons, the redemption of our bodies. For in hope we are saved. Now, hope that is seen is not hope for who hopes in what he sees. But if we hope for what we do not see, we wait for it with patience. Likewise, the Spirit helps our weakness, for we do not know how to pray or how to, how to. We do not know what to pray for as we ought, but the Spirit himself intercedes for us with groanings too deep for words. So, liberation is coming. Redemption is coming. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, liberation is coming. But is it through the James Cone liberation theology silliness of the 1960s and especially the 70s? Where people just kind of have any sort of faith at all so long as we're fighting against the patriarchy, right? And racism. So <clears throat> this is because of racism. Well, what's racism? <clears throat> Let's just roll with that. Let's just say it is racism. How should we solve that? Well, everybody should be divine, right? We'll look at that number two in a moment. But what is racism? Or better, partiality. God shows no partiality, right? God shows no partiality. Men, women, Jew, Greek, slave free. All are one in Christ. Now, that doesn't mean there's not distinctions. That means we all have human dignity that's worth it. Now, I guarantee you, as I already stopped or talked over, that this woman and hat maker both don't value babies, right? Because this is actually going to stand in the way of progress. And we see Roe v. Wade, thankfully, hopefully, being overturned. But I already did that video. Go check that out if you haven't already. The point is, we will get redemption, right? The whole creation. That's why we have earthquakes, tornadoes, famines, disease. That's why there's things that happen because the creation is not as it ought to be. But God is redeeming it. And he will eventually get a new heavens and bring in a new earth where righteousness dwells, where there is no more terror, no more suffering, no more crying. But these women don't want that. They don't want Christ. They want a Christless reality. 
Well, friends, that's not going to happen. Number two, so redemption is coming. Number two, divine, divinity, right? Are we divine? Acts 14. Then when the crowds saw Paul and what he had done, they lifted up their voices, saying in Lyconian, the gods have come down to us in the likeness of men. Barnabas, they called Zeus, and Paul, they called Hermes because he was the chief speaker. And the priests of Zeus, they're even tricking the priests, whose temple was at the entrance of the city, brought oxen and garlands at the gate and wanted to offer sacrifice with the crowds. But when the apostles, Barnabas, oh, Barnabas is an apostle. Interesting. I somehow missed that. Apostles Barnabas and Paul heard of it. They tore their garments and rushed out into the crowd, crying out, Men, what are you doing? We are men, also men, of like nature with you. And we bring you good news, that you should turn from these vain things to a living God, who made the heaven and the earth and the sea and all that is in them. In these past generations, he allowed the nations to walk in their own ways. Oh, I got to keep, oh, I got to stop. It's so good, though. So number two, we're not divine. I've probably said different things for number two. Number two, we're not divine, okay? We're not little gods. And this is a good example, the fact that we're not, right? Jen Hatmaker and her guest aren't more goddesses than other people. And what we're doing is ultimately we would be lying. Right now, human dignity, and we'll look at that number three. So we're not gods, but we do have human dignity. So not gods, number two, human dignity, number three. This doesn't mean that we're worms. I know some theologies have that. I understand their reasoning, whatever. We're not. We are made a little lower than the angels, although we are but dust. We are merely people. He knows our frame. The fact of the matter is, these women want to lie. Right? They want to lie and say, oh, yeah, you're, you're, if we just are all sacred, we're all sacred. Well, Paul and Barnabas say, no, they tear their clothes, of course, sign of, 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 of sadness and contrition. Lastly, James 3. And there's more on this, but we'll look just briefly at these. Last one. Number three. But no man can tame the tongue. Yeah, ain't that the truth? It is an unruly evil, full of deadly poison. With it, we bless our God and Father, and with it, we curse men who have been made in the image or similitude of God. Out of the same mouth proceed blessing and cursing. My brethren, these things ought not be. Does a spring send forth fresh water and bitter? I got it. There's just, once I start reading the word, it's just like, oh, I got to. It's so good. It's just so good. James is one of my favorite books. I mean, Romans, Acts, they're all, I always say that. Anyway. I hope you do too. If not, pick up and read. Pick up and read. But we're made in God's image. This doesn't mean we're divine though. And this is this whole new agey thing that like the spark of divinity. I'm this, I'm that. It's like, I don't, what? You're not, you didn't, we saw this from Acts 14. The, we worship God because he's the one who made the creation. Okay. You didn't make squat. I didn't make anything. Jen, this other lady, Y'all didn't make nothing. You're going to come into the world naked and you're going to die naked, basically. Okay? Yeah, you might probably have clothes on, but let's neither here nor there. The Egyptian pharaohs and everybody else in between wanted to take it with them, right? You hold the, hear the old adages, you can't take it with you. It's true. You can't. How, how, how are we supposed to do that? You can't. So if we can't even take stuff with us, let alone all the other things that a god would be able to do, but we're not... We're not, no, again, she says sacred and then divine. Now, I, th I would say there is a sanctity of human life, which again, these women are probably very pro-abortion, at least in some capacities, maybe not as radical as others. I don't know their stances, so I don't want to speak for them. But the point is, their worldview necessitates the murder of the unborn and also euthanasia and other things. Well, if the person says this and the wife and the mother and this person, uh, you know, personal autonomy, bodily autonomy, blah, blah, blah. Anyway, the point is that this is silly.
But this woman is masquerading as Christian-y, sort of, right? She seems nice. Oh, yeah, it'd be great. Then that would be good. Then we would usher in redemption. Then the new heavens and the new earth would come. A Christless reality. If only then, if we could only get all 7 billion plus people on the planet to get together and agree. Has that worked before? We didn't even get to agree after the flood with Noah and his family. Noah got drunk. Then he cursed one of his sons, but that's another video. The fact of the matter is, this is silly. This is nonsense. Don't fall for this, people. And I know you probably haven't, because I feel like I've got very smart watchers. That's why you watch this channel, right? <clears throat> anyway, if you haven't, <clears throat> if you have not subscribed, please consider subscribing uh, and click that like and drop a comment and share this, please, because there are so many tendrils, to use Hatmaker's words, reaching out and different false ideologies, different false ideas that sound really tasty, right? They sound sweet and wonderful. And then you put them in your mouth and then you swallow them and they go down and they're bitter and they make your stomach sour. It's nasty. It's wormwood. But it sounds good initially. And some, some men, sometimes men listen to this one more than women. And sometimes women listen to this one more than men. But we all have our infirmities. We all suffer and, and, and are cursed in many different ways. We all fall for it. Don't fall for it. Be against the world and for the world. That's the impetus of this channel. That's why I do the things that I do, because I want to help you be against this type of thing. I'm not against Jen Hatmaker, per se. I'm against her teaching. I'm against this woman's teaching about new agey idolatry and, and all this other silliness that just isn't true. Right. If someone had cancer and you tell them, well, all you have to do is do 10 jumping jacks in the morning and 10 jumping jacks at night and drink orange juice, your cancer will be gone within six months. And they do that and their cancer's not gone. What did you do for them but lie to them? They want lying. They want deception. They want to usher in a Christless reality. An eschatology that said, oh, if we only did this. Anyway, I hope you found this helpful. I've got a bunch of other videos on the channel as well. Uh, Contra Talks are my long form where I talk and interview people. Uh, go ahead and check those out if you are interested. I've got one dropping in a few days with Dr. Jared Longshore, uh, who transitioned from Founders Ministry, a, a, a Calvinistic Baptist ministry within the SBC. Uh, to Canon Press, which is more Presbyterian, baby baptizers and all that, and from Florida to Idaho. So we talked, had a great conversation about many things. So check that out. Look for that on Saturday midday. Uh, those are also, Contra Talks are also on Spotify, Apple Music, and Google Music as well. So you can basically just search um, Richard Contramundum or Contra Talk. Probably Contra Talk's better. That'll get you there. So just search Contra Talk and find that. So again, that's the, the talk show. I try and do those at least once a week. And I try and do this show anywhere from two to three times a week. Although, honestly, it's been getting a little more challenging lately. So pray for me, uh, if you would, just as far as all the ins and outs of life and being a pastor and a husband and a father and balancing all my work. I'd love to do this every day. I really would, but I just don't have the time to do the research and the planning and as, as much as I'd like. Um, so I do have ways of financial support. If you're ever interested in that, uh, you can do that in various means. One is through cash app. Um, and then another way is buy me a cup of coffee. It's like Patreon. So it's buy me a cup of coffee.com slash Richard Contra. You can drop me a tip there as well. So I've got a few supporters on that, which is nice. So thank you. Thank you. But anyway, I hope you found this helpful and go ahead and check out some other videos on the channel. I've got a bunch. All right. Take care. Y'all. God bless.